Our next question was sent in the corny drive through at gmail.com from Kenneth Long in Washington, D.C. Good morning, Jim and Brian. My question is about Linda Miles. But oh, first God. And foremost, let me Do say. Do we have some good song submissions coming up to <laughs> put in a better mood after this one then? I think so. First and foremost, let me say that I've been a Cult of Cormet, Cult of Cormet, Cult of Cornet member. Since the 1980s, when you cut a promo on Kendall Wyndham saying he was so skinny that when he turns sideways and sticks out his tongue, he looks like a zipper. <laughs> I don't even remember that. that that's true. And when he gets a sunburn, he looks like a thermometer. As a matter of fact, right now, standing there, he looks like a Q-tip. Back to my question. He has, he has to run around on the garden hose to get wet. What are your thoughts on Linda Miles? On one he, of he, your, could, he could use a Cheerio for a hula hoop. On one of your drive throughs you referred to her as a piece of shit when talking about <laughs> her when she was paired with the Bashams. If you've already covered this, please forgive me. I have, and I've mentioned it in the past, but just real briefly, no, she was horrible, horrible, horrible in the ring. She's the only person that I ever did not air an o OVW, an Ohio Valley Wrestling television match. I took the whole match out that we taped and put in a VTR over the segment rather than air the match. And this was in a wrestling school. And this was a, a basically, it, it, they signed her because she played volleyball and she was an excellent women's athlete, right? But she had no idea what she was doing in a wrestling ring. She was had two left feet, and they were the size of boats. She was six feet tall. If she had got the enhanced breasts, which I'm not in favor of, she still wouldn't have had that. She looked like Shelton Benjamin physique-wise. She had great abs, but a lot of people weren't looking at the girl wrestlers for their abs. She she had no personality in her promos that would come out as she was anything other than just doing this under duress. There was just there was nothing there. But because they'd signed her and she'd been in tough enough and they'd made over her, they had to find something for her to do. I put her on TV and I, like I said, she nearly killed Jillian Hall in that match that I didn't show. Dropping her on her head, whatever it was rotten. So then I kept her off TV for six months and I'd put her on shows where she had to work with the guys in intergender matches. And yes, I hate them that, but you know why? Because the guys were strong enough to move her around because she was bigger than all the girls and fucking put her where she needed to be. And obviously she wasn't beating any guys, but I would have her work on these spot shows with the guys and she looked okay in that respect because they could maneuver around. Then I'd put her back in with Mickey James or one of the other fucking girls and she was a cow on ice. And that's finally, um, when she finally resigned, I'd kept her off and they kept bugging me. Laura and I just said, put Linda Miles on TV. We want to see Linda Miles. And then, by the way, this was after she'd already fucked the Basham's career up. More on that later. All right, so that's why I put her, I believe, against Mickey James in her last OVW TV match. I said four minutes sunset flip is the finish. I swear to God, if the first fucking move she didn't do, try to do a spinning head, Mickey tried to do a spinning head scissors, and Linda Miles almost dropped her on her head. Uh, what the fuck? And this time was not like the first time. The first time... When I went back after she'd killed Jillian Hall, or nearly killed her, she was standing there waiting on me in the locker room with all the boys gathered around to see what was going to be said, pointing at Jillian Hall because she'd heard me on the microphone, Linda Miles had, saying that, fuck it, that is the worst fucking match. We can't fucking show that. She's standing there waiting on me. And the main event has gone south, too. I've got other problems besides the goddamn girl segment to fucking worry about, right? And Linda Miles is standing there pointing at Jillian Hall, who's sitting there crying. Poor old sweet Jillian. It's just my fault. It's not her fault, too. It doesn't take two people to have a bad match. It's just me. You're just going to blame me? I said, yes, I'm going to blame you, you fucking cunt, because it was the shits, and it was your fault. Get the fuck out of my building, right? <laughs> well, what, what am I going to say? She's yelling at me in front of the boys. So then that's when I left her off for six months, and she came back and had a match. And this, this is, it still was fucking rotten. And they got through it. And I said, well, it's my fault. I knew better. 
but I did it anyway. I put her back on TV. I'll accept blame. She walked right back through, grabbed her bag, asked Mickey if she was okay from where she dropped her on her head, turned right, went out in the parking lot, got in her car, called the office the next morning and quit the business. And that was the best decision she ever made. During that time that we were trying to get something out of her, the Bashams were the best working heel team in professional wrestling. Doug Basham and Damaja, who they made Danny Basham, when they made Doug shave his head so they could see what he looked like bald, they had been teaming up for two years here, and they were fucking fantastic. And Damaja was 22 years old, and cardio out the ass. He could go 45 minutes in a hot building, wouldn't even be breathing hard. Doug was ripped to shreds. What a physique. Danny Davis's first student, because he was his nephew, taught him everything. He was a tremendous worker. You've seen the, the matches with Nick Dinsmore and Doug Basham. You've seen the tag matches with Damaja and Doug Basham against Dinsmore and Conway. Yeah. And all of those matches. You've seen Basham against... Didn't, didn't Doug worked with Kurt Angle down here on a, on a TV special? You've seen all of that. I have. Doug, all, all guys that WWE misused, yes. Yep. Yeah. Doug and Danny Basham, can you think of an in-ring heel tag team between 2002 and 2004 that was having better matches or looked any better than they did? Uh, off the top of my head, I can't from that period of time. Close enough. Anyway, so finally, when I beg them and plead with them to take this tag team and use them, Especially, can you imagine them against Edge and Christian on, on SmackDown or whatever at that point in time? Anyway, they won't use them. So finally, I split them up because they've been teaming for two years. I got my Six Flags season coming up. So I split them up so they can work against each other. And that's when they decide to use them as a tag team on SmackDown. But instead of bringing them in and using them as a tag team, based on what they've been doing in developmental, which is these badass guys that did hang out together but now have split up but that were wearing leather pants and the fucking spiked wristbands and had cool shit going on and had fucking hot women with them like Victoria and Jackie Gata and Nikita and they're the fucking modern version of like a horseman type group they make them two flunky guys that are being whipped by their fucking s m dominatrix manager Shaniqua and Linda Miles knew as much about s m as I know about goddamn the space shuttle and how to fucking pilot it to Mars. <laughs> and, and it killed their fucking career pretty much. I mean, Shaniqua's deserved. It was, that was a mercy killing, but then they just sent fucking Doug and Dano back because they had already made them flunkies and had some fucking goofy douchebag whipping them with fucking belts and them hopping around selling their ass like goofs instead of actually even then being in a real goddamn S and M gimmick, which boy, that could have lit up fucking UPN network back then. But no, it was just, it was garbage. And, and that, and they were done. And they wasted so much talent. So yeah, Linda Miles, not on my highest list of all of the people that ever went through OVW. She was probably the worst. And I think last week you said that you thought that the big swole match on Dynamite was the somehow... big, the big, the big swole match on Dynamite was worse than the match I wouldn't show of Linda Miles's because at least Jillian Hall was on the other side of it, and she knew what she was fucking doing. It was just fucking brutal, just bleh. <laughs> 